Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back here to my channel where I play Planet Zoo. My name is Nissa and today we are back here in Future Life Canada and we are building for the Rubin Crane. And if you can't see it on my face, I'm so hyped because I really appreciate what we did here today. We also make a little food corner and such, you can't see it here. It's in the background and the beautiful bridge here. I'm in love with what I did and I'm so happy. So I really want to show that to you. So if you want to see that or simply just learn more about the Rubin Crane, then please keep watching. I just want to start by zooming completely out here. As you can see, I have finished the pathing where I wanted. We may make some altercation later on, but is where the zoom mainly going to be. And as you can see here, we are going to another part. So it's just that you have an idea that it's still combined with the other part of the zoo we already have uh, built. But it is in the other end in here. And uh, actually the water here combines with the moose water also. So just... Yeah, just to help you actually have the idea of where we are. I am well aware of the fact that this habitat is built much, much bigger than it actually have to be. And there's two reasons for that. One being that here in Future Life Canada, we really like to give the animals as much space as possible. But one also being the fact that we want to keep the guests away from these specific birds why i will come in on that later in the video uh, but just know that there's good reason for it but let's start by talking a little bit of this beautiful beautiful bird it is a whooping crane which is of course a crane and uh, cranes have these tendencies to being kind of high because both of them are long neck but also of their long uh, legs the whooping crane therefore can have a height up to six uh, sorry two meters which is 6.6 .6 feet although they only weigh around six to seven kilos being around 13 15 pounds they have the genus grus which grus is um the crane genus uh, for the cranes and the family of cru cru uh, they are of course in the class avis which again cl uh, class is this big overall class where we really split uh, split up uh, categories like um, for instance avis which means aviary where you will find most flying animals the whooping crane live relatively long 22 to 40 years which again kind of long for an animal but even though they live that long, we still only have around 600 to 300 living individuals in the wild at this point. And that is one of the reasons they belong here in Future Life Canada. But we also need to remember that we are in a Future Life project, meaning that this is not a zoo. We do not get money for normal so guess we only get money through donations from our sponsors and therefore it's extremely important to keep our sponsors happy that's the storyline it anyway therefore we of course need somewhere where they can go to the bathroom and get a snack it's also one of the most important things for me no matter where i have i'm always thinking of my next snack probably why i'm th this fat at this point so we are of course building this food corner now but i do not finish it up we have the building and such it's functional after today but we have some like around like this little path i want to make it pretty i also may want to go in again and just add some smaller details inside and such uh, later on but i think we're gonna build more habitats around this and this video is already pretty long even though i really try to spit up some of the build a lot because it's long um so therefore yeah we we will have other opportunities to have time to go back in and do some of these things looking at the whooping crane you probably would be a little confused if you only see them see a picture of them and if you are a planet zoo player you could probably get confused with the red crown crane but based on the fact that they simply 
they live in opposite sides of the world uh, and a few other like size difference and such uh, they they should be easy to sell apart if you know what to look for one difference is the color of the beak one difference is that they don't only have the red patch on top but they have this a blackish dark coloration around it and they have both black and reddish coloration kind of dragging out the smile line on it i will really recommend just google a picture because it's kind of hard to explain but it does look like it's the smile from the beak continuing backwards in this kind of beautiful angle it's it, it's really beautiful to look at uh, if I'm being honest they also have black feathers on their wings but they sit kind of on the underside of the wing uh, so therefore you can't really see them unless the wings are out when they're out they are really easy to spot on some of them when they're in you can kind of see them looking like tail wings just under the white wings uh, but it's not all of them you can see that on the whooping crane is of course a canadian animal why we can talk about it here today but it also a what is it called a, a american like they also live in the united states sorry that was a long way to say that uh, they live in the temperate climate zone so therefore not the northern northern part of canada as far as i know um but the temperate part, part of canada they do reach they live around everything with water basically we have the marsh marine freshwater coastal blackish water uh, lakes swamps wetlands but also agricultural grasslands and anthropogenic biomes sorry that was a mouthful uh, again some of these areas are more suited for actually living and some of these are suited for like we are just making a pit stop on our way while migrating the whooping cranes have a few reasons for being this low in numbers um one thing is historical and some things are more nowadays the most historical reason is back in 1941 there were only 27 individuals left in the wild because they were simply over hunted again we didn't used to think that we could run out of animals to hunt and if they taste good we would simply hunt them i say we but i've never been to north america so uh, but people like food that's a simple fact and especially meat have historically been one of our most important uh, resources to be honest so it's not weird that they were hunted but there were only around 21 individuals left in the wild and two in captivity so it's not weird that it would take time for the numbers to get back up but they still have issues uh, today such as human disturbance, illegal hunting of them, uh, but also collisions with power lines just as a lot of um, birds have. And then they also have issues with predators that either eat them or their eggs or their chicks. Uh, so in, in general, it's not easy to be a crane in North America. This far, all I have stated is from sorry, animalia.bio, link is in the description, but I have also brought up uh, IUCN Red List, that link will also be in the description, and I have Nature Canada here today, Government of Canada, and the Nature Conservancy canada uh, again i think at least two of the places you can actually go and donate if you want to do something to help uh, i'm not sure specifically it will go to this beautiful crane um, but if you feel like you have money and you want to do something about it it is a possibility but again i do not expect you to donate every time i mention that you can I already stated a long line of threats according to the IUCN 
sorry, according to Anamelia. But looking at Nature Canada, there is also one really, really big thing that Anamelia didn't mention. And that is the fact that their habitats are threatened. And it's not enough. And I'm gonna state this very clearly. It's not enough that we protect the places they live in the summer and the places they stay in the winter, but they need to land on the way when they migrate and they need to land places where there's sufficient food. They, there doesn't need to be as much food as where they are in winter and summer because they are only there for a short while. But there need to be sufficient food. There need to be clean, healthy water. There need to be not enough predators. And there need to be a safety around them. They will simply not land if you have a technofist in the area uh, and this is very very important things to keep in mind when you're looking at the issues for not only the whooping crane but a lot of migrating animals and for this specific issue something very concrete are currently being done and have been done for some time at this point and i gonna read up again from nature canada here they state what's being done. The whooping crane is federally protected under the Special at Risk Act and the Canada Wildlife Act. It is also protected under the Migratory Birds Convention Act 1949, sorry, 1994, which prohibits the harming of killing of and collection of the birds and their eggs. I'm sorry, I just needed to read that up. I know I'm not good at reading in English. Um, I'm not good at reading, period. But it's just so important that this are multiple different acts set in to help not only they are not made for the whooping crane these are made for animals in this situation and includes the whooping crane and this screen volumes if you ask me that we have so many places and so many animals where it is needed to have these kind of rules uh, i do understand why we need to have them because i don't think a common hunter would just uh, know every sing single like uh, animal out there how many are there in the wild should i shoot it should i not it better to just have the rail sorry the rules and state no you should not shoot this one it's far easier for the hunters to remember and i do not assume that any hunter will actually like accept that and not hunt it um but it's pretty much what a government can do and i really respect the canadian government to go in and do these things but according to multiple of these websites, there is also being done things to protect the areas these beautiful birds live. And that's probably the most important part. For instance, at this part, the only Canadian uh, place where they do nest every year. And it's good that they feel like they are safe, they can come back there. That part is great. That's perfect. That's what we want. But we also want them to be able to be other places. What I find really interesting is the only place here at this point, 2023, is Wood Buffalo National Park. And uh, we actually talked about that place before because that's where all of the beautiful wood buffaloes were reintroduced. Uh, now the group of, uh, sorry, lost words. The group living here of the whooping crane is smaller. It's not like all of the whooping cranes in the world will live specific here. There are, some of them are also in the United States and stay down there. Um, some of them just pass through different kind of areas. Um, but it is interesting that a, a place that's already so protected as we talked about in that video for the wood buffalo is also extremely protected which was a reason of course but this allows the whooping crane to be there in peace and 
just get a, like a break and areas of this park is actually closed part of the year to protect the whooping crane and make sure that the guests do not disturb the birds this is why i decided to make this area so big because i don't think we actually have a whooping crane here in future life canada i think we are lucky enough to have placed or park a place where they already migrate to so this could for instance be their summer nesting place and then in the fall they will leave and come back in spring that would be so cool that idea if you ask me and then if you turn it around and see that of course they can go and they can come back that would maybe hurt the place if it was a zoo but guests would come here to see the first burst of the season and yes my guests do complain about them not being able to see the birds they have an awful view of the birds but it is simply to make sure that they have enough peace and quiet i actually wanted to give them even more space but i think this is a nice place where they can go up on the bridge through glass and look with a what's called binocular colors i think they're called and see these beautiful birds from themselves or if you have a good camera you can do that um they're also the pathway where they can see it but in general the birds here can stay a long way from the guests but still it's so open in a way where the guests can like see them but not be close to them at all and i feel personally that would be really really great for these birds and just what they need Beside making the habitat bigger so the birds could stay longer away from the guests, I also actually used three or maybe four different things to give the birds as much peace as possible. One thing is that you can see that some of the path is actually a long way away from the habitat still to add even more distance. Then we have the stones here. The stones are actually more so built for the purpose of keeping up this path because they don't stay up by itself. So that was the reason for building it. But they will also again add to distance between the birds and the guests, but also add to silence the area within furthermore as you can see i used a wood fence wood is extremely good to isolate sound and i guess because we have these guests on this side where there's a food corner where people will be noisy especially some adults will sit and still eat while their guests because uh, our kids are playing around kids scream and they are noisy so we want to protect the birds from that therefore we have the wood fins but furthermore in a second you will see me add a lot of smaller pine trees and that's because again wood isolates sounds but also leaves and I know pines are not leaves, but they have these needles that again have the structure that again really, really uh, isolates sounds. And I am able to place them this close because this kind of trees can grow that close to again really, really, really isolate. I also give the staff a little longer path over there to again create distance between the birds and the guests also because these again these are flying in birds because they would still be wild birds in this case and therefore when they land they don't want to make think that this area look really noisy they will have to have the feeling that this is a safe space for them to land so again creating all of that simply to give the birds a place they can call home without feeling that they are invaded by all of these supporters that future life canada would have i know it's a fantasy world but when i started reading about these birds i really felt like we needed to do something a other thing i actually also do for the birds is that the plan was between here and the moose i want this bears that on some way could walk from one side of the water to the other on some kind of bear bridge i haven't figured it all out to 
egg yet, but I wanted the bears to be up there so you could kind of see them up there. But I got away from that idea simply because of the fact that it's not fun for a bird, any kind of bird, to be on the ground here with a bear maybe two meters above your head. You don't want that. Uh, so I went away from that idea to again make them feel as safe as possible because unsafe animals do not breathe well. <laughs> just just facts. We want them again. We want them to breathe. We want them to feel safe and we want them to know that this is a place they can come back to next year and next year and next year. Again, hopefully at some point the flock will grow too large and split up and some of them will need to find other places to live but we want them always to know that this is a home they always can come home to to zoom out again on a bigger scale we actually also have another things going on besides the act i read about earlier in this case i read from wildlife species canada.ca again link to all of this is in the description but they read bird conservation region strategies environment and climate change canada and partners have developed bird conservation region strategies strategies in each of Canada's birds conservation regions, BCRs. In these strategies, selected species are identified as priorities for one or more of the following regions. Conservations concerns. Again, uh, species vulnerable due to population size <laughs> distribution Population trends, abundance or threat, stewardship responsibilities, for instance, species that typ typify the regional heavy fauna or have a large proportion of their range or population in the sub regions. Management concerns. Species that require ongoing management because of their eco-economic importance as game species or because of their impact on other species or habitats. And finally, others' concerns. Species deemed to priority deemed a priority by regional experts for other reasons than those listed above or because they are listed as species as risk or concern at the provincial level. I know that was kind of a mouthful, but it's specific his strategy is set in place based on what the birds needs or animals needs are meaning that we are gonna fix the issues they have but we're not gonna set in like on all places in this case it would for instance be the fact on conservation since the population size has issues and they are disturbed a lot it could also be others being that these are moving they are migrating and have specific issues in that area again stewardship i'm not sure but it could maybe also fit in there but basically we are located like locating the specific issues and setting in there and this is one of the reasons why i feel like these beautiful birds have hope for the future lastly i'm gonna go into the iucn red list and confirm that the numbers of mature individuals, this is not individuals alone, but mature individuals in the wild currently lies between 500 and 249 individuals. But the most important thing here is that the numbers are green and they are increasing. The numbers are growing and that's what we want to see and need to see for the future. Meaning that the beautiful whooping crane, Gus Americana, have a future on our planet. 
for now enjoy the cinematics and i will definitely come back afterwards Okay guys, that's all I got for you today. I really hope you learned something here today and I really hope you enjoyed what you saw. Anyway guys, as always, you know the drill. Like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. I really hope to see you again. Either in the comments below or in the next video. Bye guys.